how did you find me? You've been living here for five years. I know I hear it. It's the show, isn't it? Why don't you let her go, Rick? It just feels like the right thing to do. Look, Rick, I've done a lot of shit TV in my time. Nothing compared to the stuff I've done with you. The world's changed, Rick. I've changed, you've changed. When are you going to grow up? People don't want to see you on TV. You're pushing 60. You're grotesque. Look, Rick, I know I owe you a lot, but I'm quite prepared to forget about that. I suppose Graham and Mark are doing it. Lana? Yeah, the gang's all back. How is Lana? She asked about me? Not really. I suppose you've got the same half hour set as well. I've got a new life here now, Rick. I don't need to go back to that. I just want to stay here and finish my new book. Are you writing a book? No, I'm reading one. Look, Rick, I don't know who sent you, but you can go back and tell them I'm just not interested. I'm happy here now. Just focusing my music. Same money as last time then? Actually, it's a little bit less. I'll see you next Wednesday. Good afternoon, welcome to Sports Chat. It's a relaxed sports show. Joining me now is my co-host, if you like, Richie McCaw, All Black Captain. Welcome, Richie. Thank you. Fantastic. Big year. Be... <laughs> and sports chat. Anyway, we've got time for a call or half. Especially through now. Okay, cool. we've got a call coming through, Richie. Uh, uh, Troy, is it Timaru? Come in. Oh uh, yeah, g'day. Uh, uh, first time caller. Uh, of course you're a first time caller. It's the first time the show's been on. <laughs> <laughs> you get them all. You get them all. Anyway, yeah, carry on, Troy. What's, what's your question? Oh, uh, yeah, my question is to Richie. Uh, who are your role models? I guess as a young fella, rugby role models ahead were guys like uh, Michael Jones. Yeah. He was, uh, he was a pretty special player. And Todd Blackheader. Sure, um, you know, Yeah, he uh, took me under his wing when I was young, so I guess they're a couple. And, and it's important, isn't it, to have, um, to have role models like that? I mean, undoubtedly, you'll be a role model to a lot of young players out there, as indeed I was, but... Um, Fantastic. We've got another call coming through now. Come in and call her. Yeah, g'day, Richie. Hey, a uh, great game last week, mate. How, how, how the AB is going to crack the defensive back lines? Probably best if I answer that one in a way. I mean, if you don't mind, Richie, uh, I, just, I can throw it back to you later. Yeah. I'd like to see the defensive bomb come back in for a start. Um, it's been talked about in the past, but never really seen many teams doing it. That, of course, is the bomb behind your own posts when you're hot on defence. Good to see people like Dan giving that a crack, don't you think? No, definitely, definitely. I don't know whether the, the big boys would be too, too happy standing up from a scrum. It's a bomb, but... Uh... Um... Obviously played a bit of cricket and um, you know better the you know, front foot stuff, you know, really, you know, getting in there. And it's a great game, and as I say, we're going over there to Melbourne to do a bit of stuff on the, the Australian World Eleven game. It should be exciting stuff. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it should be should be good fun, actually. Oh, it's nice to play a bit of cricket myself. So I'm not really interested, thanks, mate. The, um, Zip it. Daniel, congratulations on your selection in the um, World Eleven. How's it been working trying to get the team of stars playing as, as a team? I mean, it's early days. Uh, it's been good, I think. Uh, a few bonding sessions, a few nights out, so that sort of gets gets the team together pretty well. I think uh, if we got 2-0 up, it would be a very good feel amongst the team. They lost the Ashes, they're going to lose this, and they're going to lose the world number one. Number one, yeah. Yeah, they're going to lose it. Do you have an opinion on that, sir? Nah, see? Let him talk, let him talk.
uh, for the Australian team to be a part of this series. Uh, obviously earning that right with some performances over the last few years. It's up to us to, to really stand up and, and play the brand of cricket that we know we can play. And if we do that, then I'm sure there'll be some great uh, cricket to be seen. I think your selection has to come down a lot also to not just your bowling, but your, your batting of late's been um, pretty good. It's good and bad in some ways because there's so many good bats. And I think I'm down at 10 at the moment, so it makes it a little bit tough to, to get a run with a bat. But, uh, you know, hopefully that was part of the reason I got in selection. You've got some signatures there, who you got? Oh, yeah, man. I got uh, Sunil Gaskar, the legend, and Rahul Dravid. Do you remember when I used to play? No. <laughs> I actually had the record for um, bounces. Okay. Bounces, yeah. Not anymore. I took 17 to the head in, in one game. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do you like about the one day game? What do I like the one day game? It's a pair by a game, it's very quick, so it's very fast. I want the 50 hour game to be reduced to 40 hours, it's more quicker. 30. How about 2020? 2020. Yeah, 2020. How about two overs each? <laughs> nah, that's too less. We won't get worth for our money, isn't it, sir? Going up. Nice and how are you? Still the best team in the world, though. And as I say, a good team will always beat a team. A, a good team will always beat a, a, a champion. A team. A, ch a champion team. A, a team. A champion team will always beat a team of champions. Something like that. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I did a bit of work with Shay um, a couple of years back, actually. Oh, on I think you may remember that. Yeah, yeah, when he was doing the bit of the, the chucking. Not now that I'm on this team, there's no problems oh, exactly. with actions and things oh, like that. Exactly. Actually, I got kicked out of a, um, a club team I used to play for a couple of years back for, for chucking. Chucking league spin? No, no, I used to spew up all the time when I, um, whenever I did a couple of overs. Um, nervous? It was a fitness. Fitness, not nervous. Well, I was coming off a long run up then, so I'd you know, bowl a couple of overs and vomit. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Just like to check out, thanks. Yeah. Any mini bar at all last night? Mini bar. Oh, yeah, it had the one beer, just the standard. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. We'll see you later. I mean, that, I mean, this year is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. Well, I was bowling, of course, and they were sticking two or three men outside the boundary rope. Um, a couple of them were actually about three or four rows back in stand, and that's not good for team spirit, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Anna, you've had some time off, but the National Bank Cup starts this weekend. Thoughts on that? Yep, first weekend the National Bank Cup, so the Trust Diamonds are really keen to get Actually, going. Actually, Anna, can you just pause before you, before you answer a question on a telephone link? That's how we do it. <laughs> Not quite that long, Anna, just... <laughs> Yeah, the cup. Right, you're right. looking forward to it. Yeah, really looking forward to it this weekend. The Trust Diamonds head down to Dunedin to play the Otago Rebels. So it's the first weekend, and I'm sure all the players are really keen to get going. Fantastic. We're, we're crossing live to, to Shane Bond now. Shane? Yep, yeah, I'm here. Yep. Shane, Shane, are you there, Shane? Yeah, it's going well, thanks. Good to be back. Can, home you, can and, you hear uh, me, Shane? Can, can you hear Anna, Cup. Shane? Thank you, Shane. That's a lot better. Shane, what did you make of the, the World Cup final, the, the Australians' performance, the whole thing? Thanks, Shane. Yeah, yeah. I think all, India were woeful pretty much, and uh, yeah, the best team won the final. Aussie, it's too good. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a very weird feed coming through here. It's a Korean feed. How's morale and what's expectations um, for, for the season? Um, I think morale is very good. It's great to have our Silver Ferns back. And uh, I think we're going to kick ass this season. That, that's fantastic. Crossing now live to a map of Taranaki with a photo of me beside it. What do you think of that, Shane? Yeah, that's great. Thanks, mate. Look at you. Uh, I'll you. Thank you. Please keep your finger in your ear, please. We're experiencing leakage. Sorry. Thanks, mate. 
JK, let's talk about passing. A lot of people at home won't know this, I do. Some of the basic moves in netball, the passes, for example. First pass is uh, the chest pass, which is from your chest to mine. Great. And the next one would be the bounce pass. <laughs> you see, with... <laughs> The Sting had a great season last year. How are you going to take the Sting out of the Sting? <laughs> uh, the Sting have lost a few players from last year, so um, they're a little bit inexperienced down the defence end, so we're hoping to um, really exploit that down our attack end. You know, it would be great to see another team come out and win the National Bank Cup this year. Yes, it would. We haven't answered your call. However, you are now in a priority queue and a customer service rep... Come back in, Shane. Shane. Try and keep your finger in your ear if you can. Shane, Shane. Sh Shane, what's, what's going on, Shane? Yeah, have you got a feed or not? I'm just trying to do that cool pause thing you talked about. Right, Shane. I'll tell you when to do that in future. Um, well, what is the future for you guys? Your movements from here? Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be cruising around home for a couple of weeks, doing a bit of training and uh, just getting myself ready for Sri Lanka. Fantastic. And, and, uh, Please hold. Your call is being transferred to the next oh, hold on, hold operator. On. Welcome to... Yes, we talked about it earlier. You're off to Sri Lanka. Well, what the, what's the uh, feeling yeah, there? Three, three weeks' time, mate. We're what, what's Sri happening? Lanka, so looking forward to it. I'm going to a landline. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was uh, stinking hot. A um, couple of thousand yeah. meters up, yeah. always kind of picked up the breeze, so hopefully yeah. we're back down at sea yeah, yeah. running around like this. I'm looking at him. Nothing at all from Beijing. No message. For you. How's it going to work? Good question. Well, we're based at the Crown Plaza Hotel here. We have a number of facilities that's going to help us. We have a telephone. Um, we also have a mini bar. Downstairs is a business centre. We can log online and check what's happening in Beijing, back in New Zealand. There's a photocopy machine. Don't think we'll need it. A fax machine. We can go back and forth and send faxes um, to and fro willy nilly. Um, due east. About 60k that direction, we've got the Disneyland Hotel. That's our second media center, our media hub, if you like. We'll be firing information back and forth between the Disneyland Hotel and this hotel here. We can link into Tomorrowland, Frontierland, Fantasyland, Toontown. We'll be using these two dual facilities, along with our man on the ground in Venice Beach, Brad Waters. The beauty of doing it over in LA with the time zones, we're about four hours ahead of Beijing, so we'll be finding out what's happening in Beijing about four hours before they even know what's happening. Fantastic. Mike's going to be one of our reporters on the ground here downtown Hollywood when we, when we cover the Olympics. But Mike, you're going to be looking after things down here and getting the pulse of the Olympics from downtown Hollywood. Right. Yes, I really look forward to it, you know, coming up real soon. I'm going to put you on the spot here. A bit of Olympic quiz. We, we're going to do this throughout the series. Um, do you remember what year the 84 Olympics were held in L.A.? 1988. You're an idiot, Mike. You're an idiot. <laughs> Holy me, jaw! Oi, Francis, yeah. Francis. Just a word in your ear. Um, I've noticed that the the um, the bar there, mm -hmm. the, the bar, house bar, it doesn't open before before ten. No. Yes, it opens at twelve noon. Twelve. Oh, twelve. Twelve to twelve wow. noon. On weekdays and until one a.m. on weekends. That's normal. Yes. Even while we're doing our Olympic show coverage, it won't be opening before ten at any. No, we we can't make any special difference. No. no. Okay, so it's open for 12 hours yeah. once. Okay, thanks. All right. Thanks. thanks. You're welcome. Well, one of the major talking points of these Beijing Olympics has been the smog, of course. I can tell you the smog here at the moment is not too bad at all. It's coming in pretty well. Nice breeze and nice blue skies. Not sure about Beijing, however. But joining us at Venice Beach at the moment is our correspondent there, Brad Waters. Um, come in, Brad. Uh, I can't hear. Come again. I can't quite hear you. Yeah, so breaking up pretty bad. Yep, no, Brad, mate. 
Yeah, just just move to your left a bit. A couple of steps would do it. All right. Brad Waters, of course, down at Venice, and we'll be catching up more with him than later on in the show. Um, of course, he's Samsung. A um, bit like your Simpson, front loader, dry and washer, good energy rating. You know, it depends what you're into. Um, I could see you in probably something like this. Simpson 5kg dry, you know you got kids and stuff like that, you're probably going to be doing a little bit on it. So, uh, you know, horses for courses. Um, hell, that's Scott Dixon on there. Krishna, I'm supposed to be at this interview. I might knock off a bit early, is that right? You do anything, whatever you want to. Thanks, mate. Scott, feel the weight on that. Well, you're a big boy, aren't you? Um, good luck with the rest of it, thank you. Yeah. What, what's this all about? Um, it's all about the canteen and how Scott Dixon's really helped us out and yeah, getting canteen's name out there for the bandana challenge. Okay, I understand you met him for the first time yesterday, what was that like? <laughs> it was cool, eh? He talks to me like a normal guy, I just yep. feel like one of his mates. Keep up the good work, eh? Awesome. Thanks, mate. Now this is something you don't see every day, a go-kart procession, and this is where it all began for Scott Dixon all those years ago. Now coming around for another lap now, coming up behind him. Yeah, we're on now. Um, Scott, great to see you again. It's been a long time. What a great year. It's been a big one, yeah. You know, getting married and winning the 500, and uh, it's been uh, one, one I won't forget. I'm, I'm going to pick you up on the, on the marriage thing, because um, I don't know kind of how to articulate this, but what's the story with women not filling up the petrol tank all the way in the household car? You know, letting it right on, right? What, what's all that shit? Yeah, she doesn't know how to fill the car, so, you know, I find myself having to run up to the local gas station quite often. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if he brought it up or if I brought it up, but he says he's been having some problems um, in the marriage already, which is a bit of a concern. Oh, really? Oh, um, how do I say this? With you not filling up the, the tank in the car right up. <laughs> um, but the well, yes. Um, they love to drive the things around, but you know they, they don't yeah. realise that you actually got to put something in them yeah. to, to uh, keep them going. Uh, and the, the little lines flashing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they just ignore it. You know? I don't see it. I don't know. Like I don't know whether the steering wheel's in the way or. I mean, do you think maybe perhaps a woman should have to, when they set their license, have to prove that they can actually at the petrol station actually fill up all the way? Because that's actually a really good point. You know, when you when you go down there, you do your written test. You know, you got to go through about you know how you got to yeah. take the money out of your wallet, put the thing in the, mm -hmm. in the back of the car, mm -hmm. and. And push how much you want. Exactly, just tick that one off and um, then perhaps we can see if you can drive. I got it from him last season, you know, running on very yep. little fuel. Um, I like to leave. <laughs> well, it didn't work I for him, did it? Him. Yeah, exactly. He brought it up. I thought I, I'd be wrong if I didn't uh, mention <laughs> it to you God. and you know, it's the least I can do, you know. It's, um, I'm having to do a couple of other jobs as well at the moment. I mean, one of our sponsors, Bond Bond, who are a fine sponsor. They've been getting me in the store to sort of work as well as this kind of oh, stuff. That's good. He's not working. He eats here, he sleeps here. He drinks here, and you told me he's very dedicated stuff. He is going to stay your entire life. He say I not pay rent. I watch different different television. I don't want this stuff anymore. There you go, and remember what it's really about is these bandanas. Um, getting there, buying those from Repco, going to Great Cause Canteen, of course. Uh, children with cancer, fantastic. Got to support, man. Get out there. Hold on. And we're out in five. <laughs> yeah, watch, 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 watch. Ruben, huge game this weekend. Two teams um, pretty much in form at this early stage of the season. Um, how's the preparation going? Oh, the boys are uh, really keen and, and looking forward to it, you know. It should be, uh, should be a bit of a... A uh, tough one. There's a few guys here with bumps and bruises, but um, hopefully, hopefully they'll uh, we'll get a good team together. Last time we met um, in Wellington, I, I asked you um, when you're on, on, on the field for 80 minutes, uh, how you go about doing poos, and um, I realise now that was wrong and unprofessional to ask that question. Um, to, to even be talking about poos at that sort of time of night, 8:30 time slot, I think we were then. We're on TV two now, so um, I'm, I'm taking my job a little more seriously and. Um, 
on that note, good luck this weekend. Thanks, mate. Yeah, really cheers, mate. You know, big game this weekend. Um, are you looking forward to it? Yeah, always looking forward to it. I mean, coming up against the Blues, I've played some good footy, so yeah, looking forward to another, another challenge. Oh, Greg, everyone's really enjoying the uh, Crusaders rugby this year. 50 games to Canterbury last Saturday night. You ready for 50 more? Don't know about 50 more, but yeah, no, it was, uh, it was, a, it was a pleasure to get 50 in for Canterbury. Um, it's, been a, um, it's been a wee while, but it does come around reasonably quick, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I'm on three, Marsh. Yeah, I'm on three. And, and how about the whole culture of the team? Uh, um, are you enjoying sort of um, slipping into it and, and a bit of fun off field as well? Yeah, it was a great, uh, great sort of family to come into. They make it really easy to, you know, be, be one of the boys. Uh, it's a bit hesitant at first. I thought, you know, they might have their own little groups, but, you know, they made me welcome. Yeah, really enjoying it. Now look mate, one thing, I just think that like we take our rugby quite seriously here and I just think that you should put some pants on really. Oh I'm sorry, I mean I, I'm really just trying to make the people relax, that they're a sport apparel. Put okay. some pants on. GG speed. We had a couple of quiets together, I mean it's uh... 50 games, so I suppose you have to have a couple. Um, you have to uh, watch what you eat, eat and drink these days. Because I, I know what it's like when I was a younger um, sports journalist. You, you're fairly popular with the with the young ladies. I mean, you're. At, let's face it. Look at the state of some of the other guys. You're pretty much the, the love machine of the team, man. Yeah, well, it's uh, debatable between the between the boys. I mean, a few a few of the guys would sort of see themselves as, you know, the number one good-looking guy on the team. Do you want to name any names there? Um, no, nah, I think it might be best that I, that I keep my mouth shut. Okay, mate. Well, good luck this weekend. Godspeed, and um, being from Canterbury, we'll be rooting for you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, mate. Thanks. Blues game this Saturday night. Um, what do you anticipate being the problems? What are you working on at the moment? I suppose for me, the biggest biggest thing is trying to catch those wingers, and I've might have worked with Paddy O'Brien about maybe putting a motorbike on the sideline or something, maybe they might help me out. It's a good question, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can't afford to give them any. Any turnover ball, one of their great strengths is the ability to create uh, turnover ball into to wide play quickly. Oh, we had a look at uh, all the different permutations. Um, certainly there were some guys who were, were close to selection. We had a look at fullback. Uh, um, you know, we've got an outstanding player there in Chris Latham. Yeah, we want to be expressive on Saturday. We want to go out there and do our absolute best and really... Uh, go out there and enjoy ourselves um, and that's what we've been intending to do so. We're really busting to get out there this weekend. Um, it's, it's been a huge lead up to this game and, and, and we're where we want to be for the My love. It's time, the time is coming and My darling. Is we, we haven't. I've hungered for your touch in love. We managed to, to do enough uh, in 15 minutes to win the game and that's going to be very, very handy on Saturday night. Do you, do you think it's wrong to perhaps to compare teams of different areas like say the 1905 All Blacks with, with the 1956 Wallabies for example? I think we certainly respect them, the best in the world, and for us it's New Zealand, you know, they're the ones that we've always competed most strongly against. Uh